Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank you, the, uh, the IPC, and of course, Joe, for inviting me. Um, so I will show you uh, our model uh, of SOPLUS uh, for psoriasis. Um, Joe also already introduced me, so I don't have to repeat uh, that. Um, so why psoriasis as a model for value-based healthcare? So um, I will dive into history a little bit. Here on the left side, you, you see a, a case of a, a patient of us. Um, and if you look into uh, all small blocks, you see a lot of uh, issue issues. Uh, this woman had anxiety and depression, had a hypertension, overweight, uh, was more than a year in sick leave. Um, but also had severe psoriasis, so with a high PASI score and a high impact on her quality of life. She sporadically went to the psychologist and had a huge drinking problem for which she was, was admitted, but she was not very compliant. She took daily sleep medication and antidepressants, but still felt bad. Um, so it's an example of one or, of our patients. Of course, not all our patients are like that, but some days we say, Oh, this was a, a day with a very special ones. And um, what, what is very um, uh, remarkable uh, in this patient is that until now, she only had access to topical therapy. None of the dermatologists uh, dared to prescribe systemic therapy um, and kept her on topicals just for safety. Um, and so she became de demotivated, nothing works, and she stopped all treatment and all doctor visits. She found SOPLUS on the internet Googling and she, she said, I will give it another try. So this is why we believe uh, value-based healthcare is necessary for psoriasis. It's not only a skin disease. So, and that is something that Professor Lambert um, noticed already more than 10 years ago. This is not only a skin disease. I have to work more elaborate. I have to structure my consultations. I can't do this in 10 min minutes or 15 minutes as dermatologists. I have to get work together with uh, other departments, with nurses that can do the intake, for example, that can, can educate patients. We had a communication channel uh, in between visits, because of course it's a disease that um, fluctuates, that has flare-ups, so we can't uh, only see them once uh, every six months. Um, so she installed PsoPlus, um, PsoPlus 1.0, more than 10 years, 10 years ago, and we already saw that uh, patients were put on uh, efficacious medications more rapidly, and they had to come back uh, less often. So that were positive uh, process indicators, but still we had the feedback, well, you're a big spender, aren't you? Because you are, you are, you are investing a lot of time and a lot of means in a disease like psoriasis, which can't kill patients in a direct way. Um, so Joe went to uh, a training, I, th I believe it was in Oxford almost seven years ago, and it was about uh, value-based healthcare. And it uh, seemed like uh, the answer to our prayers because it gave, gave us a framework um, to show that we were delivering better value, not only uh, process indicators, but really patient relevant outcomes. So we made the de decision from going to, so we wanted to go uh, from so plus 1.0 to 2.0, really establish value-based healthcare for psoriasis. So uh, this has been already introduced by uh, Marcia and Fiona, so I won't go into detail again. Um, so we wanted to start with value-based healthcare um, more than five years ago, and it took us some time to, to find out how do we start. Eh? And uh, I will show you these slides because uh, if anybody in the audience says, okay, I want to try this, I hope you get inspiration uh, by the way how we did it. So, of course, the number one um, issue and uh, thing to do in value-based healthcare is measure outcomes. So we were very enthusiastic. Let's start measure outcomes. So it, it sounded easier than it was because we had some um, outcome sets, but they were mainly for clinical uh, studies. So we really didn't have an outcome set for psoriasis, which was clinical rel uh, relevant for clinical practice and which was patient relevant. So there was no really value-based outcome set. 
So uh, we looked into literature. We did a systematic re uh, review on value um, on uh, patient relevant outcomes. And here you see all the outcomes that we found over in over 10,000 articles and uh, the percentage uh, of articles they were uh, reported. And um, for example, here you see complete clearance was mentioned in 80% of the articles, symptom control, of course, also. And then when you look into life impact, treatment convenience also. So you here you really see it's um, driven by clinical studies because we did then a focus group and then a ranking uh, uh, exercise. And then you see when patients rank, which is the, uh, the most important for them, symptom control was on number one and complete clearance was only on number five. And treatment convenience, which you would believe is important, was much lower. And surprisingly, confidence in care which is a standard, not a standard item to measure, was number three for the patients. Um, so we couldn't have guessed that patients would be putting confidence and care on number three, even before control of their disease. So it was a good uh, exercise to do. And it resulted in this um, overview of the um, outcomes that we wanted to measure. So we knew which out items to measure. Then we have to had to search for the right tools. We had to to consider linguistic uh, issues like is it available or validated in Dutch or not, um, which ones are used a lot, etc. And so we started measuring with this yeah Belgian value based um, outcome set. And of course, it's um, our ambition to. Um, to make it more uh, internationally, to, to uh, evolve to an uh, international outcome set. So now we knew uh, which outcomes to measure and which uh, instruments to use, but still it's not that easy because you could see we wanted to measure a lot of things. And if you want to do that during the consultation, it's not feasible. So we had to work out a workflow that is was pleasant for the patient, but also feasible for us. Um, and I think you will recognize maybe some some um, items from the talk of Fiona. So also here in Ghent, patients make an appointment, they are referred or they come on their own initiative. And at that moment, like two or three weeks before their appointment, they get questionnaires via email. So they log into a portal and then start filling in a lot of questionnaires. But um, people uh, are, are tending to do it. So sometimes we call them uh, the first time to explain why it's important to us. Then when they come to the clinic, first they get an intake with the nurse. She collects all relevant information. She discusses the uh, results from the questionnaires. She screens for comorbidities. I will go more into detail later and has in-depth conversations and uh, often also already include, includes some education for the patient. And um, so a lot of the time is invested uh, by the nurse because the, our way of thinking is that the dermatologist should, should really be able to focus on the clinical decision making, uh, that she has uh, the maximum of uh, information to make the right decision and to refer, refer for the detected comorbidities. And then we give a follow-up appointment. And um, as uh, like value-based healthcare wants it, it's not um, like... Uh, on coincidence or based on the agenda of the organization nor the patient, it's really based on a treat to target score, uh, which will indicate to see patients uh, in three months or in six months. And then next to that, we have uh, nurse consultations and even teleconsultations. So it's very uh, highly structured. Here you have some Dutch screenshots of the, the uh, portal that we work with. Um, from the first time that they may make an appointment, they get to see a video about what is SOPLUS so that they understand why they have to fill in all those questionnaires, even questionnaires about IBD and arthritis, for example. Um, and they have a video on what is psoriasis and a brochure. We also give them homework. So I ask them to go to their GP for a blood sample. Why is that important? The day that they come in, we already can discuss the results with them. It's much easier then. So we can, they have direct feedback uh, on their blood results. Otherwise, you have again a delay. So you, you notice it's in a lot of the details. 
um, they fill in the questionnaires. And then uh, at the moment of the consultation, we look into the all, all the results. And then the relevant ones, the nurse will this and the doctor will discuss with the patient. So we, we notice that if we give a clear feedback to the patients, I notice this and that in your questionnaire. Sometimes I go deeper into the scoring of the depression or anxiety. They really appreciate that because they notice it's really used to orientate my care. And then everything comes together in the uh, electronic health records. So here you see the structure of it. Uh, again, we don't leave anything uh, to, to a coincidence. And uh, we screen for every comorbidity uh, twice a year. Um, so it's really uh, even the frequency of what we measure, um, which consultation is uh, predefined. So I already talked about uh, screening about, uh, for the comorbidities. Uh, also that, are we, okay, we, uh, how do we measure outcomes? Now, then the second uh, challenge was how do we screen comorbidities? So we dived into the guidelines that we had, uh, the international guidelines, and we had to, well, we, we, we uh, adapted it to the um, Belgian uh, situation. And for each comorbidity, 13 comorbidities, the most prevalent one, we made uh, this uh, table uh, of the comorbidity, the cutoffs, and what to do if it was too high or abnormal. So a lot of data, um, and we discuss it in the consultation, of course, with the patients. But then again, um, we have uh, value meetings uh, every month, uh, even more. And then twice a year, we have an IPU meeting with all the uh, comorbidity department also, and we discuss the aggregate, aggregated data. And then uh, we look into the trends that we see. So we also have uh, quality improvement on a higher level. So it gives uh, direct feedback um, of what we detect during consultations. And here you see indeed, for example, for, uh, this was a sample of 113 first patients uh, we saw in our new framework. And then we directly see, okay, which uh, comorbidities are very prevalent, uh, are not to be missed. Um, I thought in the workflow, I talked about uh, the, the appointments that we give uh, after three or six months, and that they're not based on coincidence or agendas, but based on the treat to target. It's also uh, public, uh, published, um, and here you can see all the items that will uh, steer the treat to target. So uh, already, uh, also, for example, uh, the PASI is in it, the quality of life uh, is in it. Um, the burden of the treatment, etc. Um, and in our paper um, that uh, describes SOPLUS, we also have uh, defined all the consultations and which patients should be seen um, uh, in, during which consultation. So it was Fiona, I think, that talk, talked about uh, co-design. So we established um, a value-based healthcare for psoriasis in our PSO Plus system, but still we want, wanted to have the opinion uh, of patients. So we also did a co-design exercise to improve uh, PSO Plus care from more of uh, a qualitative point of view. So we did interviews um, and made a video uh, of those uh, interviews, uh, a 30 minute video, had two workshops together with HEPs and uh, patients. And based on that, um, we detected two important items. And uh, also Marcia and uh, Fiona already mentioned shared decision making and the importance of it. And um, during that co-design exercise, um, shared decision making was number one concern of the patients. So because of that exercise, we started working with a decision aid, using it during uh, almost every consultation as a nurse. We, we mm. situate the patient in the uh, treatment pathway and we discuss with them what are the future perspectives what have we already had? What are your preferences? What is uh, feasible for you? What isn't, um, et cetera. And then yeah. the second one more item, minute, uh, Elfie, yeah, because I'm yeah. almost yeah. ready. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, and then the second item was, of course, lifestyle behavior change. We know there's a strong cor um, 
correlation with psoriasis and the severity. So we really talked with patients, how can you, we support you in uh, changing your lifestyle? So I won't go too into detail because of course you've already seen this slide twice or even uh, three times today. We started as a multidisciplinary project team, but we are really trying to evolve to a matrix organization. And this is, yeah, like the structure we try to, to design. Um, we see the PsoPlus team as a coordinator and we work with uh, narrow with um, the referral departments. Here you can see them uh, in the image. So measuring costs, uh, measuring outcomes, um, uh, then uh, screening for the comorbidities. And of course, another important item is measuring time. And here you see every uh, point in the workflow that we uh, yeah, really measure. And we, we make, made an app to do it, to make it very feasible, because as a healthcare provider, we don't have any spare time. So it, has to be, it had to be correct and fast. And we measure time for every patient coming to PsoPlus now. Uh, and we have nice uh, future perspectives because we are implementing and rolling out value-based healthcare for um, hydrodenitis suprativa, so HS+. Plus. And we already noticed because we have so much, much experience in psoriasis that the exercise is um, uh, much easier and it's, uh, it's very, the, the implementation process goes much faster. So thank you very much.